<laughs> C commit to fondling the little sister. Please. Whoa, I didn't say all of that. We here at Anime Club After Dark. <laughs> Look, if Mashal taught me anything, it's better to be a siscon than a lollicon. <laughs> Hello everyone, it is that time of the month again, time for Anime Club After Dark to pop a squad and hit you with all the best and worst of what we have been indulging in recently. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight I have our czar of source material, John. Is that shirt a Gamersup shirt, or is that just like a, like a freaking Ahegao shirt? No, it's uh, from, uh, fuck, uh, the demon, uh... Uh, girls, Helldiver, no, not Helldiver, um, Helltaker. Oh my god. Yeah, Helltaker. Uh, okay, okay. My god, I saw the, the the smoke rising out of his head as he was trying to think of that. I knew it was like, hell something. Because I, I see people wearing Gamersup's gear, like merch, all mm -hmm. the time, everywhere, and like, I'm just like, I can't tell if this degenerate weeb shit that you're wearing is Gamersup's <laughs> degenerate weeb. Like, I need classifications of degenerate weeb nowadays. I need like a freaking encyclopedia. <laughs> To understand the degeneracy. I thought I was a degenerate because I know a lot of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I'm degenerate enough to understand that. Like, I hate you. I hate that I know that. But then I realized I haven't even scratched the surface of degeneracy compared to some other people around here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we found that out during the Pokemon Smasher Pass that this one down here is the <laughs> real degenerate on our podcast. I am perfectly innocent. I, well, we came, we came up to wait. every Pokemon, and you're just like, smash, 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 smash. I All I remember was you you saying something about, like, you wouldn't guess something about Chinoda and Bulbasaur. I'm like, oh, he probably wanted to fuck Bulba Baby, didn't he? Ugh. Brother, mm. ugh. Brother, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, though, we have our prismatic tripper here, Chinoda. Hello. <laughs> For those who don't know, Prismatic is the new Destiny 2 subclass. It's very fun. And very All right, I'm, I'm really freaking old, because when I hear Prismatic, I'm like, Prismatic Core Online, and I'm like, I'm playing StarCraft 2. <laughs> freaking Prismatic Core. Use my race. <laughs> you must construct additional playlines. God, I love playing freaking StarCraft. I want to stream StarCraft and play it. <laughs> Do it. StarCraft 2 Night Win. <laughs> I would, no, Shut. no, even better... Alex, I want you to stream StarCraft, original StarCraft, and I'll tell you how to play. <laughs> Wait, is I'll it coach not PvP? you. Wait, It'll is be it not PvP? No, do the campaign. Do the campaign. Oh, do the campaign. Okay. Yeah, and I'll Does tell you how to build and what to build. Mode? Yeah, yeah, you can fight people and stuff. There's maps and stuff. I recently uh, logged on to the Battle.net to see, like, oh, man, StarCraft Brood War, my favorite. I used to play this so much back in middle school and high school and then StarCraft 2 in high school and beyond. And then uh, I was like, oh, my God, there's like a thousand people still playing this. <laughs> it's like my it's people. Like... You're still alive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't want to play against any of those guys. They'll kill oh, me. God, no, I'm trash crack. now. Crack. <laughs> when you go back to your old game and it's like, God, I used to be so much better than this. What the fuck happened? Oh, no, I was never good at StarCraft 1. I was trash. <laughs> I was I... never good at them, but I always enjoyed playing them. I remember my first game I played against someone like in real life. I like this this strategy works inside of the um the computer like play, playing against computers, right? Where you can repair buildings because I was playing Terran and you can repair a bu uh, buildings. So I built bunkers in front of a choke point and I just kept repairing the buildings so they couldn't get through my buildings. <laughs> so I just assumed that oh if I do this no one can get past me like this is an un unbreakable strategy, guys. <laughs> I played against this guy in middle school where I was like, oh, yeah, the, I'm hella good at StarCraft. <laughs> and he just walks through my base, kills the SCVs repairing the bunkers immediately, and then just rolls me. And he's like, what the hell was that? I was like, what? How did you do that? And I didn't know that you could just you could command units to attack specific units. <laughs> I just thought that you had to use the attack function and then you would make it like attack you can attack click and it will just walk in that direction but the ai is so stupid in the game that they just attack whatever's closest <laughs> they don't attack like the most valuable resource to attack first like the healers and stuff i didn't know i don't know why i was like 13 bro leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> welcome to john recounts his childhood <laughs> listen 
I took that defeat personally. Then I became a pro gamer. <laughs> Just not a Starcraft. And, and then he went back, and he still gets your ass kicked. No, I'm I'm good at FPS games. Uh, I am decent at most of other games, but I, I wouldn't say I'm like good. I'd, I'd say decent. Hmm. All right, should we actually get into the monthly? Oh yeah, now? this is not a WTF. I, I don't know why I'm chatting yeah. the WTF. <laughs> So yeah, let's talk a little bit about the things we've been watching um, this last month or so. I want to ask you guys a question. Have either of you seen... I'm not. This is not an anime per se, but it is animated. Have either of you seen Smiling Friends? No. Wait. Charlie. Charlie, Charlie you missed it. <laughs> it's the favorite part. Charlie. <laughs> who are the uh, Renaissance men? I, I don't know, Pim. I just oh, I, I'm I don't know. Yeah, I'm reading you. You know everything I know. <laughs> I have Charlie. Did you know the Renaissance men would do that? <laughs> Him. I keep telling you, <laughs> dude. I freaking love Smiling Friends. It's oh so funny. I don't know why I... it's so funny. Season two is airing right now. Actually, on, it is um, Adult Swim, and I've been watching it on um on Max every. I think yeah. Monday night it comes out. So I've been watching. Yeah, because it, it, it's it comes out on Adult Swim on Sunday at midnight. Um, but it airs on Max the very next day, and that's yeah, where I've so. been watching it. <laughs> I just um, this new season is really, really good. By the way, <laughs> I think it's so, really good. Yeah, I guess I should I should kind of describe it a little bit for for people who haven't seen it. So, Smiling Friends is a adult animated show on Adult Swim. Um, it was co created by Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack. Um, Zach Hadel from Oni Plays, if anyone's ever watched them. Um, or Psychic know Pebbles. him as his actual... Um, Psychic Pebbles. Yeah, Psychic Pebbles, the actual animator, Newgrounds guy. <laughs> I didn't one of the, realize... Um, the, the very first time I him? ever... One of the, the old guard. Time, yes, the very first time I ever like realized... Or the first time I ever watched something of his was... Uh, do you remember the old short of Get Out of My Car? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's the first thing I ever remember watching that he animated. And I, I didn't realize it was him until years later that animated it. Yeah, I I only knew Zach Hadel from um, Oni Plays. Because of the, <laughs> the freaking... The 9-11 joke that they did when they were playing Worms or whatever it was. Yes. <laughs> like, I just remember because he would always like, be the one wake that would up, go and wake up they hit the tower man <laughs> they hit the tower <laughs> like, what? what is this bit where is this bit going I turn on TV that... any channel doesn't matter <laughs> like, I just remember that he, on Oni Plays in particular he would always be the one that would just start talking about some random shit that would completely derail the conversation <laughs> I know <laughs> Um, and he, and his impressions were always really good. I've never heard anyone do a better Donald Trump impression than him. Oh God! Um, He's got the oh, perfect voice. Who's for that? It. That guy that was uh, he was fired from SNL and then he became a really big comedian and then they brought him back to SNL to do impressions, the same stuff that he got fired for. Um, Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis. Yes, he does an amazing Donald Trump impression. <laughs> That's actually the second time that's happened on Saturday Night Live, too, because they did the exact Wait, same thing with Norm MacDonald. Oh. <laughs> Norm MacDonald got fired from SNL for making a bunch of O.J. Simpson jokes in the 90s, and then, like, seven months after they fired him, they they, uh, they got him back to host the show. <laughs> They're like, we need you. <laughs> like, we need you back really bad. But no, yeah, Smiling Friends. And that's Friends, one of so the things that, um, like, Smiling Friends is not a show that I would think would be good for TV. Like, I feel like it'd be, I, I thought originally when um, Smiling Friends was coming out, like, it would be, like, an online-only thing, like, a streaming service-only thing. Because hmm. what you can do and not do on TV is a lot different from what you can do uh, online. You know, that's why we have shows online where that's like, you know, like Netflix shows. You watch a Netflix show, it's like, you see full frontal nudity and stuff all the time. And yeah. it's like, that, that would never fly on cable television. Or you see something like Has Been Hotel. That seems like something that's tailor made for like internet animation. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to streaming services and like online video services and stuff, it's made it possible. But I think mm. it's great that they, uh, Zach Hadel and Michael Cusack were able to make Smiling Friends because, dude, I don't, I don't know what it is about the comedy. Like it, it's kind of reminiscent of like early mid 2000s, like lol, raw XD type of comedy, if you know what I'm talking about. Is there yeah, really lol, so random? Yeah, like, lol, so random, but also, like... But it's not annoying. 
but it's not annoying. Yeah, I, I, I don't know how to describe smiling friends, uh, properly because like I, you know, I'm I'm not freaking great into cartoon animation or anything like that. Not like um some other channels that review it, but mm. all I know is I watch episode, I laugh like just full on <laughs> freaking guttural laugh at the jokes. The setups are so dumb. <laughs> I think it, I think a lot of the I think a lot of what makes it funny is just the amount of non sequiturs in it. Like there's so a lot of the humor is based on non sequiturs and it's super funny, especially when the joke obviously doesn't land, but the characters keep talking anyway. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck is a non sequitur? I have no idea. It's like when you say something that is supposed to be funny or supposed to elicit a, sp a specific reaction and it doesn't. Uh, okay. So like um. Like, in season one, there's an episode where they, they go to uh, Smiley's Shake Shack or whatever the heck it was called, Smiley's Restaurant, and, like, uh, it turns out the restaurant owner Smiley's been murdered, and it's up to the Smiling friends to figure out who murdered um, Simon S. Smiley. Simon and S. Zach salty. Hade, so, oh, salty. I don't know, I kept saying Smiley. Salty. Uh, and Zach Hadel locks the door and is like, that means the murderer is still in here. And he locks it and it's all dramatic and it makes him look like freaking disheveled and stuff. And none of you are getting out of here until we figure out who it was. And then like one of the guys goes, dude, you didn't have to yell. <laughs> it's <just> like, what? <laughs> that's the scene. And I was like, that was this classic. That's great. I love this scene. A fun fact about that episode, you know the Puddle of Grease in that show? It was originally, they were considering asking Chris Chan to voice the puddle, yes, I yeah. do know. Chris that. Chan oh was God, originally puddle. supposed to be the voice of that. Yeah, and yeah. And then all of the shit happened with Chris Chan. Uh, because Oni Play had like Oni Plays had like a huge history of making fun of Chris Chan on their 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 streams and their their stuff that they put out, and Chris Chan was aware of this and it actually like enjoyed the, it. Um, they had the I don't know what his name is the number fifteen. Can I get a oh, yes. number fifteen? Um, <laughs> they got chills. that guy to actually what? That's the guy's name. Chills, isn't it? The guy who does the, the top, all time top 15s or whatever. I, I have no idea who the, I There's know a the bunch channel. of like YouTubers and like content creators that do voices on the show for. Yeah, the, it's like, great. The and like, oh, and stuff. in season one, they make fun of the freaking Lord of the Rings um, television series or whatever it was. The, the original one that's like really ugly and stupid. The old, old uh, <laughs> animated Hobbit. Is what yeah, the old yeah. animated Hobbit Ooh. where they have they literally took the art style from there. Like <laughs> his name is Mip. <laughs> They, they go to the enchanted forest like, i also love how that entire that entire episode is just a reference to bjork stalker they tried to entire, blow her up that entire episode was so funny like charlie we gotta we get to go in a quest in the enchanted forest charlie all right pim the enchanted forest is where look we, we just need to get there like because he has a headache or something like zach hadel's character charlie he has a headache, right? And it's like, ah, oh, dude, that was right in my ear, man. I I, I love that that, ep that opening scene where where Alan and Glenn were playing video games. Like, bro, can you turn it down? And they're like, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. He's like, oh, they were just doing construction outside of my house at like six a.m. And then the the dudes come in and just blow a trumpet right in his ears. Like, oh, that was right in my ear, dude. So <laughs> fuck, dude. It's. <laughs> It's it such so a good series. So it is. Great. Oh my god. You you need to watch it. Season one is up. Right, Each right, episode's right. only like what, ten? 11, ten or eleven 12? minutes long. Oh, so yeah, it's it's, it's very short. Very short it's, animated yeah. series. But yeah. it's hilarious. And the, the the most recent episode, or at least the most recent episode that's come out at the time of recording this, of uh, that that thing with Jared Fogel, I laugh my <laughs> fucking with ass boss, off, man. With Mr. Boss Man. <laughs> <laughs> like they bring out hey guys i have a special gift for you it's jared fogel now you and know as you we're know, contractually obligated to make everyone who asks us to smile and there's just like this long silence and it cuts back to them like uh -huh. and it's like i'm just fucking with you <laughs> what the fuck dude this the show dude oh my god i can't explain the comedy i just know it's hilarious every single i've I've rewatched the first season a couple of times, um, mm. 
and I've rewatched like whatever has aired for the second season like at least twice just because like mm. it's just that funny to me, dude. I don't know, it's hilarious, and it's not like it's a long watch, you know. Like, <clears throat> no, you can watch the entire thing and like, an, uh, uh, including all the Under new episodes hour. that are come out in season two. Like within an hour and a half, you can have it all done. Yeah, like two hours because um, I believe the first season is only eight episodes. Plus, they did a uh, a special. The special. They go to Brazil. The Brazil that special. was hilarious. Oh my god. Oh, the Brazil special is so good. Uh, but John, who's the best character in the show? Um, I really like Boss Man. <laughs> no, the, the the right answer is <laughs> freaking Glip. <laughs> Glip. Glip is the best character. He has such a way with words. I like Alan too. Alan's so funny. The episode, dude, like, dude, the episode with the with the paper the, clip, uh, the paper, the paper clip, clip. My fucking god! <laughs> First of all, call back to the pilot episode. <laughs> Second of all, that landlord is fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, hey, Mister Landlord. Hey, Alan, do you want to? Uh, was it? Uh... I, was, I was wondering if you wanted to hang out with me, smoke weed, fill our bellies with diet soda, and play Burnout Revenge for the PS2. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> you can tell we really like the show because we literally remember all of it, and it's, oh. God, dude. I, I don't think we need to tell anyone. To, like, Smiling Friends is a great freaking show to just go it watch. I, I, I don't. Understand I, I discovered why I like it, it so like much. I want to say two to three weeks ago, and it's just been a great ride ever since. Oh, I I remember when Smiling Friends the first season was coming out, and I remember mm. they're like, yeah, uh, Zach Hadel, the guy from Oni Plays, is in it. And I was like, oh, I like his comedy. I like watching Oni Plays. Like, I'll give it a mm. shot. And then I believe Adult Swim dropped the first season all, all in, in one, one day, all in one night. Yeah. So all eight episodes. So I was like, oh, cool. Like I watch it and I watched it. And I was like, dude, what is this show? <laughs> <laughs> when the was it Grim and Gnarly? Get out of my yeah. head, man! You blow out of my head. Get out DJ of my spit. head. <laughs> DJ spit. Oh my DJ god. Spit. I, I think something else that's really funny about this is I have found out that this show has gotten really popular in Japan. Oh, and, what? <laughs> what? and and there's there's this uh, Japanese woman who's been doing episode reviews of of uh, Smiling Friends, and it's great because you actually get to see a reaction to this from a completely different cultural perspective. She's like, dude, she was doing a review of that episode where they meet DJ Spit. It's like, get out of my head, get out of my head. It's like Charlie is so brave for reaching for that gun. It's like, no, Charlie is really <laughs> stupid for reaching for that gun. <laughs> Or like, it, like the animation is like it's cartoons, right? But they also have like mm. 3D. They have like hand drawn. They have freaking 3D rendered polygon stuff. Yeah, they have they like invite, uh, they invite Well, they invite um, internet animators to come in and do certain characters. Yeah. So, so like yeah. every yeah. every episode is like a different art style. Like you have the smiling friends who will be in um, the normal art style of the smiling like friends, a like 2D art style, 2D cartoon. Sure. But then there's other characters inside of the show that are different art styles and stuff. And it's like 3D Squelton way. <laughs> way. way. The whole show sounds like such a weird mishmash of like everything. Dude, just what I guarantee you, watch the first episode. You'll be like, what the hell? I want to watch all of it now. Speaking of that, pi that pilot episode is one of the best pilot episodes for a cartoon series I've ever seen. Bold take. With, uh, oh, they got fucking, uh, Mike from Red Letter Media to do Desmond. Oh, my oh God. No. Oh, my oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, my God. Like, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> He's like, hey guys, I just got a call from a concerned mom. Her son's not doing very well. <laughs> Mr. Boss the man. mom's like a 90-year-old woman and the guy is like a 35-year-old dude. Yeah. And then Pim's like, because I love kids, Charlie. I love I kids. Love whoa, kids. Whoa, whoa, Pim, don't say that out loud. <laughs> But I just love the fact they open his door and he's got the revolver to his head. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If you guys can't help me, I'm gonna fucking shoot myself and force you to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and then the ending to that episode. Oh my god, what is that? Grab it, Alan! Gra gra Alan, grab it! He's like, what? No, I don't want to. Grab it, no! <laughs> <laughs> and then Pip's just like 3D and dried out and freaking dead, just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. You guys, oh. you should, Chinoda, you should 100% watch this. You would probably really like it. All right, all right. I'll watch it with the boys sometime soon. Oh, oh my god, dude. Yeah, and like I said, it, it's 
It airs on Sundays, or at least the new episodes currently air on Sundays at uh, midnight, and then the next day it's on Max, so. I spent like 25 minutes talking about Smiling Friends. I was real. I didn't know if either of you had seen it, so I was like, this could be really short or really long. I don't know. Oh, man. I fucking love Smiling Friends, as you can tell. Like, yes. I remember. Oh, it's so good. Uh, anyway, John, please take it away. Man, how do I follow up uh, any of these anime shows, like, with Smiling Friends? Like, this Smiling Friends is the best thing we talked about today. Like, thank you all out there for uh, dropping by to listen and watch. <laughs> Like, it's all going to go downhill from here, baby. Um, so, I guess I could talk about... I'm going to talk about two, like, just real fast. Uh, because if I, you want to watch I, if you want to watch this do a spoiler cast of Smiling Friends, let us know <laughs> below. I'm pretty sure they would I actually will 100% want to. do it. Dude, it's so good. We'll do a watch along in the server. Yes, oh, I will. Yes, yes, I will do it. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk about real quick, cause I think it's trash. I only watched like the first episode, a salad bowl of eccentrics is lolly bait and a freaking boring show. Uh, the premise is that this princess from another kingdom isekais into our world and like lives with this dude and has to like make sense of our world. That's it. That's the premise. It's a lolly bait show. Um, I, that, Sounds you know, boring. It, it's a very boring show. There's nothing actually riveting going on. I didn't want to stick around for anything else. Cause I was like, I don't care about the lolly bait. Uh, the story sucks. The main character sucks. Um, both it's the main shame, characters that's suck. The title, that title sounds very appealing. Yeah, it seems. I thought it might be funny because, like, um, like the great Jahi Sama was hilarious, and that has a yes. lowly in it, even though she's kind of not a lowly sometimes. Or the um, what's the one that Miku was in? The one with the 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 demon snake. Um, uh, Josh and oh, John. Uh, Josh, Josh and, and dropkick Josh and John. Kick. Drop kick Josh and John. That one was hilarious. So I thought it might be kind of like along those lines because like a salad bowl of eccentrics. I'm like, well, think speaking of eccentric animes that have like funny looking characters in it, I, I thought it might be like that, so I might enjoy it. Did not, didn't care, dropped instantly. Um the other game, the other game, the other uh show I watched, <laughs> then I dropped after. I think I dropped, I actually gave this one a fair fucking chance. I gave it six episodes, bro. Whoa, that's Damn, that's more, more than, than a fair chance. Because I was like, okay, I can't judge it just yet. Because the main, first of all, uh, this the show is called God's Game We Play. Uh, it makes no fucking sense. All right, it's literally a shittier version of No Game No Life. Okay, oh. that's that's the first offense. Okay, the second offense is that the rules of the games just fucking make zero sense. Hey, John, John, here's the thing though. It's more likely to get a season two. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bro, why you gotta go there? Why you gotta do that? It, it just hurts me, man. It hurts me right it's here in the true. heart. I know it's true. true. Just because it's true doesn't mean I want to hear the truth, bro. You ever hear of a what? What do they call it? Oh my god. Um, you ever hear of shut the fuck up and not mentioning that? <laughs> no, no, no. I forgot what it's called. A white lie. You ever heard of a white lie, bro? Come on. <laughs> Whisper tell sweet me nothing's lies, in my head. Tell me sweet little lies. So, God's game we play. The premise is that apparently uh, gods exist, and they came down and was like, hey, we're bored, we want to play games, and we're going to play games against the mortals. Uh, we can choose champions, and then the champions are human people. And when we play games, we play in the god realm, or something like that, in the special realm where you have special powers. Like, okay, kind of cool, I guess. <clears throat> Uh, and there's apparently one guy who's like a super rookie. He's like the best player there ever, ever lived. Cause it's like, uh, in this series, it's, if you lose three games, you can no longer be a apostle or a God's champion or whatever it is. Uh, and you're just out forever. Um, and they treat these people like freaking superstars. Like they're, they're the number one super Olympian athletes, the people who can like play in the God games. But if you win 10 in a row, or if you win 10 total games, the gods will grant you any wish. So it's like, oh, okay, like, no one's ever done it before because the gods have godlike powers and they kind of cheat. Um, but apparently there's a super rookie who's won three games, no losses. And they're like, oh my god, he, he might go all the way! Anyway, so it's like, okay, basic premise, you're OP um, for whatever reason. He's just really good at playing games. So then he, he meets the first god. But for some reason, this god has descended into the mortal realm. She doesn't live in the god realm. And it's like, it's like, oh, there's this whole mystery thing. I didn't care about it. And the first game that they play is a game of, like, matching cards. I'm not sure what it's called. Um, 
where it's like you flip a card and then you match it to another card. <clears throat> oh, the memory. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's called memory, memory I guess. I, I I don't know what the game is actually called, but you like flip cards and you match cards, and then you the one who has the most matches wins or whatever the fuck it is. So he's like, she shows the cards and shelves it. And he's like, I've already seen the cards, so I know where all they are now because apparently he just does. So the god is like, let's make this more interesting. I'm gonna make them rotate in a sphere. So there's like a horizontal and a vertical line, and the cards are rotating. He's like, nice. You've added a Z dimension, so that means. Even if we pick up a card, we won't remember where its placement is. I'm like, what do you mean? There's two axes, and they're all spinning. <laughs> How would you not remember where the cards are? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> so you're telling me you can look at 52 cards, and then you'll instantly know the position of all these cards, but if it was put into a 3D spinning circle on two axes, you wouldn't be able to tell where the cards were? Literally, like, what? That makes no fucking sense, bro. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> And I was just like, this is, this is it's shitty. That's not how this cards sh- work. Yeah, and I was like, this is a shitty fucking game. So I'm like, okay, that was the first game that they they play. And I'm just like, eh, okay, well, you know, concentration is, what what is this? Memory match? The is name's it, uh, oh, right. Yeah. You could have just brought that up, bro. I didn't, I didn't, you yeah, were you talking. Just, I didn't want to interrupt you. Anyway, I don't care about the card game name. All right, that was the first game that they play. And I'm like, okay. There's got to be a better appeal to this because it was ranked pretty highly uh, at the start. It was like 4.6 or 4.7 on Crunchyroll. So I'm like, okay. Hmm. How hard did it dip? I, I don't know. I, I think it's still at a 4.5 or 4.6. So apparently people still like it. I mean, it's got it's got waifus. It's got etchy moments in it. Like, who cares? Um, so they, they go and play against a different god. And he's like a titan god. And they're playing like reversi and chess at the same time or something. There's so many... Well, rules fuck. there's so many rules to the game it makes no sense and then they just mis- just randomly can like figure out how to beat the god at the game and then they win and i'm just like well that it made no fucking sense <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh the gods play games but they don't play fair because there's riddles in it and you got to be smart enough to solve the riddles and also smart enough to be able to beat the gods at the game and i'm like this is dumb this is real fucking dumb <laughs> i hate this so then I dropped it after six episodes. I honestly, I should have dropped it after three. It was not worth investing. You know what? I didn't even invest that much time. I put it on on the side and kind of just like watched it while I was doing other stuff. So because I was just like, I, it was just background noise. And I'm like, it's so trash, though, that I don't even care about it as background noise. <laughs> I would rather have static electricity playing at full volume than watch this fucking show. Okay. Jeez. Well, John, you'll be you'll be happy to know that it is currently sitting at a five point nine one on Mal. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God people came to their senses. Maybe oh man, that means it dipped even more. It got worse? How? <laughs> How could the show get worse? Oh yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about those two terrible shows real fast. <laughs> Thank you know you what? For that. Fair enough. <laughs> Speaking right. of terrible shows, MHA, folks, am I right? <laughs> yes! <laughs> no. I'm the glad you finally liked... came around! It's I thought everyone liked bad. the new season, what? I actually like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, I mean, listen, was it season six, season seven? What season is it on? I don't know, bro. Oh my <laughs> I mean, god. Stop counting. That's actually a great I'm question. What season ride. is this? Listen, you're, you're... Seventh. We're on the seventh season. MHA fans are eating good because it's like a good part of the story. Like, great, good, good for you guys. You, if you like MHA, good for you. Uh, I love. Hey, how I'm just it glad I up. get to see more art of Bunny Girl. Oh, absolutely! But I, I have I to say, I, I loved how it, it opened up. You got the stereotypical American coming in on a jet, uh, with the uh, weapons to mass destruction. Immediately fires them, dies in a smile. Fucking love it! <laughs> you know the only thing the show. You know, I, I I saw I saw that and I thought the only thing that could make this more American is if she flew in like t- like on the talons of a fucking eagle, just <laughs> hanging onto them. God, if she could, she would have. She she's so stereotypically American. I loved her. Just do a superhero landing and just look at everyone and go, America this. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, it's cool though. Uh, shit's popping off. Uh, plot is actually progressing. Um, 
they did a little bit of training uh here and there but like they're like nah it's it's time we're we're doing this now and i i think it's pretty cool <laughs> like not a lot of bullshit talking just a lot of fun stupid action i am really liking it no one will ever be able to convince me to go watch mha don't ever. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. <laughs> can I can I ask you something, Chinoda? Because there a lot of the seasons of MHA these last few years have been like 12, 13, 14 episode seasons. Mm-hmm. This one's listed at twenty one episodes. So is like is the pacing slower? No, it feels like there's a lot happening every episode. Like. It feels like it's moving at a very good pace, honestly. I was just curious about that because, like, so many seasons of MHA in the past have been, you know, 12, 13, 14 episode seasons. So I thought, well, they're going with a 20 plus episode season this time. So I wonder if they're really slowing down with the pacing. I feel like just because there's a lot that's about to happen and the show is coming to an end pretty soon, like, not too much more left, so they're gonna stretch it out just to keep on milking it. Bro, I got some news for you. It ain't never ending. It's like Fortnite. It's gonna keep going on. What's it gonna I end first? One Piece or MHA? Yeah. <laughs> Which creator's gonna die first? That's the question. Oh, whoa, no. Alex, whoa, whoa, Alex, whoa. Alex. Put away Alex. the death note, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alex, what do you want? Oh, uh, that's all you had to say. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, I want to talk about something else I know that John is watching. John, the remake of Spice and Wolf is really fucking good. Bro, I forgot how much I liked Spice and Wolf mm. until I rewatched it again in the remake, I guess. Or watching it again as a remake. It's oh, Dude, it's so good. It's so good. Like, I, number one, I'm really glad that they got... So we have found out since that they got the original cast back in Japanese and they got the original cast back for the English dub as well. Holy shit, that's amazing. So I'm really happy about both of those because the original English dub was really, really good. Um, but, man, I'm so glad that they, they, they're they going with like something that's even closer to the light novel than the original um, anime adaptation. Um and also, I love this art style. I know a lot of people were, like, poo-pooing it when they first saw it, but, man, I have grown to absolutely adore the art style that they went with for this remake. Oh, I totally so, love the CGI horses and the CGI dog. Oh, Great. hush. Beautiful. Hush. I was literally about it's to ask that about that. Bad. It's not that bad, and it's not that prominent either. To give credit where credit is due, they have stylized the CG, 3D CG, whatever it is, uh, to be more animated so it doesn't look as jarring as like a 3D mm. Leom. Not like yeah. in some other shows. Uh, so it's not that bad. And again, they're not. it's not a critical part of the show anyway. Yeah. The, I mean, the, the crux of the show is the relationship between Holo and Lawrence. I mean, and oh my god. Oh, it's so good. The, the, I mean, tell you, fucking the, the quiet like conversations between those two. Oh my fucking god. They've done him so well. Oh my god, and the, the last episode, the one where you posted the meme, oh my god, she's got a chair, <laughs> JR, JR, <laughs> she's got the chair, she's gonna cut that man in half. <laughs> that was so funny, I was like, I forgot that happened in the original too, but oh uh, my god, that, that entire scene, like, between Lawrence and, uh, and Hollow, I'm just like, oh, the, like, prior episode where, uh, you know, they go around and stuff, and then, like, the, the that last episode where they're talking at the end, I'm just like, oh, dude. Yeah. It's so good. I forgot how good the dialogue was in this. Can we also talk about how good Kevin's score is for this anime? Oh, the My score God. is fucking beautiful, dude. Oh, Kevin Pinkin with another goddamn banger. <laughs> Seems like he just doesn't miss lately. The, what dude, is the dude The dude just doesn't miss. This dude does not miss. Is he the new Hiroyuki Sawano? I mean, I don't think so. I, but I'm biased because I, I recently just listened to the Attack on Titan, the uh, the soundtrack mm. um, by Suwano. The I'm one like, you posted oh in the yeah, Discord yeah. server? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, Suwano's soundtrack is so good. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I will say it was one of the best things that his uh, Suwano soundtrack was one of the best things about um, solo leveling. Oh, dude, the fucking soundtrack in that was so good, too. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I mean, really happy oh. with um, the real – like, I, I can – with without a doubt in my mind say that if i've never had seen spice and wolf and i watched like this remake first i would have loved the series regardless like it's i know it's not nostalgia 
I, I know there's a lot of people, I think even uh, Chinoda and Natai want to watch the original before they watch the remake, which is fine. Yeah. Do it. But I think you can go into the remake without having seen the original and still appreciate the story for what it is just as much, if not more. I mean, Honestly, I have one really problem great. with the remake, and that's the very first episode. Like, what with about the cabin it? and all that stuff in the beginning. Oh, and that's because I'm like, because I have future knowledge and I know like everything else, like in Wolf and Parchment, I know about Wolf and Parchment. I'm just like, y'all cheated. Y'all mm. did this, everyone. But then I'm like, you know what? The people watching this remake either have already liked Spice and Wolf and know what happens or are people who have never seen it and will be confused by what happens in the beginning. But then it'll make yeah. sense later, like as it goes through, because it's like, oh, oh. I, I guess that is I mean, one very big difference between this and the original. The original did not have a framing device for the story in the beginning. Like, the story just starts. With this one, with the remake, it has a very obvious framing device that is supposed to set up a sequel series down the road. Yeah, like, it's it's obvious because of it's, like, wolf and parchment. Like, I remember we talked about it last time, too. Uh, but it's... They obviously remade Spice and Wolf because they want to sell wolf and parchment. Yeah. And I feel like eventually, once this is done, uh, they're probably going to be like going to go straight into an anime adaptation of Wolf and Parchment, most likely. Um, I hope maybe not immediately, because I would like for them to get close to being done to Wolf and Parchment before we get an anime adaptation. But we'll see. And I really like the opening song for Spice and Wolf. Yes. Uh, the ED by Claris. Like, look, I like Claris, but I don't. I don't really like the ED as much as I do I mean, the opening. It's it's not it's not as much of a memorable ed as the original ed yeah thousand sugar stars put them yeah. in the jar <laughs> whistling around the world yeah whistling around the world i think the the actual song is called the wolf whistling song i, if I remember right it is. uh but it's 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 kind of trippy um especially if you know how that song was made <laughs> no i just think the original ending song for spice and wolf is just a lot more catchier than the claris one the claris one's not bad by no. any means i just don't i wouldn't say the op or ed is bad it's just in comparison no. i actually like the op of uh the remake more than i like the first one to be honest really? more, um because the the opening for the remake is a lot more like orchestral it's more dramatic yeah it feels a lot better yeah but i um, swear to god they used ai to generate the first like 15 seconds of it where it's like all like mosaic like i swear to god that's that's like mid journey or something Mm -mm. You know, no. I know how they did it because they showed off how they did it. Oh, really? they went, they went and actually took video footage and rotoscoped it. Oh, okay. That's actually so it's not, cool. it's not AI generated, but it is rotoscoped, which okay. I know some animators consider rotoscoping cheating, but I mean, I using tools fine. is not cheating, but yeah. Yeah. Wait, you know, have you not seen Spice and Wolf? No, bro. Oh my God. And Natai has only seen the very first episode of the original series because I showed it to him when he was stayed with me. Like, I've seen an episode here and there on the Funimation channel way back when, but, like, I haven't sat down and watched it. Hmm. Really good. I will say. <laughs> I know it's really good. <laughs> I will say, I I've watched a couple of episodes now with English dub <clears throat> because it's out now, and J. Michael Tatum and Brina Palencia are, like, it's, it's, it's just like old times, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is the English dub on Crunchyroll? I have never listened to the English dub, so uh, I have yes. no idea. Okay. Yes. I love that uh, Crunchyroll has been doing be. simul dub stuff because, like, <laughs> I do like checking out, like, English dubs now, nowadays. Now that I'm no longer a um, sub purist. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I mean, I could, I could segue into the next thing I want to talk about with that, too. <laughs> sure. Go sure. for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I finished the first season of Mashal. <laughs> and um, it's really good. It's, yeah, re it's really good. Um, I thought that the whole joke with him not being able to use magic was going to become old really quick. And I no, was, it's I was hilarious. I, I was mistaken <laughs> because the joke is, how is he going to finesse his way out of this using muscles this time? <laughs> Like that's how that's how they do the joke, and it, it's it's crazy to me that that never gets old throughout the entire first season. <laughs> um, it's also the supporting cast and stuff too; they're hilarious. I love the supporting cast. <laughs> And the reason I segue directly into this talking about English dubs is with a lot of stuff that I watch, right, I want to check out, especially if there's an English dub already out, I, I want to check out at least a couple of scenes with the English dub to see how is it. Um, 
And I did that with Mashal. I started doing that in in um, episode three or four. I can't remember. But I thought in the middle of this, because it was a really goofy, wacky scene. It's like, I want to see how they did this in English dub since it's available on Crunchyroll. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did that. And to my surprise, the English dub is really good. <laughs> like, really good. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's good. Yeah. Um, you can tell that these voice actors are having a blast doing this and just having a lot of fun. Um, and I liked it so much that I watched the rest of the season with the English dub. Okay. Uh, what do you think about the the music, the score, and stuff like that? I fucking love the fact that we get random beatboxing from time to time. <laughs> it's so um, yeah. cool. And I also love like the hip hop character themes. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I, I really like the OST for Marshall. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm really excited for you to watch season two. I'm also now. like, I'm also, I'm also, I, I'm also like, I want to give proper praise to the animation in this show. It's really it's, good. Yep. Like, you think based off of how it starts, how it goes, it'd just be, you know, just a funny joke anime that's like got mm. whatever animation. No, they put serious effort into it. It looks amazing. And yeah. that's the season one. Season two just pops off even more for no goddamn reason. I'm just like, holy Bro, shit! Season okay. two freaking hits the gas. I love season two. It was so. See, good. and now I'm super, I'm super hyped to check out season two. Not just because that OP. <laughs> that's that OP is too good. It's too good, <laughs> dude. It swept the world for like a whole month. Seriously. Yeah, more than a month, uh, honestly. I would say. But now, I, I was very pleasantly surprised by Mashal. Like I, I was concerned that y'all were just hyping it up just because maybe it had good animation and a good soundtrack no, see, or whatever here's the but thing, like, Alex, it's actually funny yeah no it's thing. just a funny show if i'm hyping it up that's whatever it can be hit or miss if john's mm. also hyping it up that means it's fucking gas <laughs> true <laughs> i don't and know if, about if, that if, and if all three of you uh, you know including the tie are, are hyping it up then maybe i should check this shit out <laughs> um I will say one thing. Go. I haven't watched any of season two yet. Um, I'll probably start that maybe sometime next week. Uh, so maybe by the next time we do a monthly dump, I'll have something to say about season two. Um, I wonder if I'm going to get a Konosuba effect with this. Because like, when I watched the original like first season of Konosuba, I thought it was good. And I, I actually get, give this first season of Mashal the same thing I gave Konosuba season one. I give it a, like, a very high 7 out of 10 um like more like a 7.5 out of 10 but then the season 2 of Konosuba comes around and like that takes everything up to 11 so I'm wondering if I'm going to experience some of that with Mashal season 2 I have I mean you will Mashal season 2 there's a lot more combat um but it's like the jokes are still there the setups and stuff are still there there's I'm sure a lot it's more good story and lore still. yeah and the, oh yeah. dude the animation gets cranked up to like 11 it's way better <laughs> It's way better. There's more. There's because there's more fights and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It's the same. Music is of, still fire. Uh, OPM. Like, like there's a. It's a joke thing. It's a joke world. But like, oh, okay, that's where you go. I was like, One Punch Man season two was trash, bro. Like, no, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I think you were talking about like the setup to One Punch Man. I mean, I would argue this is better than One Punch Man because like the joke is always the same with One Punch Man. So you always know he's going to win. With this, it's like, how is he going to win? Yeah, like with One Punch yeah. Man, we know he's how he's gonna win. One Punch. <laughs> yeah, he's it's One Punch. He, he's always gonna overpower his enemies. With this, it's like okay, I know he's probably going to win, or he's going to figure this out how to you know live in this world of magic without magic. But how is he going to accomplish this? Like when they did the thing with the brooms, I'm like, all right, how are you gonna bullshit your way right. out of this one, man? <laughs> he's just kicking his legs so fast. <laughs> And the whole thing with the like the the totally not Quidditch game, <laughs> that was so fucking <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah, like Quidditch. Oh, I like how a lot of this stuff comes so close to being Harry Potter, but not Harry Potter. <laughs> There's a reason why we've been calling it Muscle Harry Potter. I Guess love, and I, I even down to the fucking sorting hat. They have a fucking skeletal unicorn. <laughs> yeah. It sorts people into houses, and instead of four houses, they got three. They even have their own Draco Malfoy in this fucking show. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited uh, for you to watch season two. Oh man, it's like just it. What what if Harry Potter but comedy? 
I love it. I, I wouldn't. I love Mashal. I, yeah, I wouldn't insult Mashal with Harry Potter like that. Like, what yeah, the it's heck? Better. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a starting point that I think a lot of people are familiar with. Right. Yeah, that's fair. But anyway, that's all I really got to say. But I'm really looking forward to season two. Next time we do a monthly dump, I'll uh, I'll have finished it. Since you talked about Konosuba, can I take it, John? Yeah, okay. yeah. Go for it. So, have you guys? Is been this season? season this is season three? three, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, again, I still haven't even seen season two. I know I liked season one. I know I'll like season two, and I'll probably love season three. I just haven't gotten around to watching it. All right, leave me alone. <laughs> Bro, it's so fucking good. It's been great. So many memes have been coming from it. I love it. Um, Alex, have you been watching it at all? I have. I haven't watched the most recent episode. Okay, same. Yeah, I, uh, I need to watch it. But holy and you're right. You're right. You you wrote this down here. You're absolutely right. The OP and the ED are fucking phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, I want. I to even. It. I don't. I haven't even watched those because I'm just like I haven't even watched season two's OP and EDs. So I, I have no idea. Uh, they're great. So they are. Uh, they cranked it up somehow even more for uh, the OP and needy. It sounds amazing. The animations are fantastic. The OP is an actual mini adventure that you can watch, and the song sounds great. The animation is fucking top notch. It's amazing. I'm like, holy shit. I kind of. Uh, I want to skip it to watch the episode but at the same time it's so fucking good and there's something new i notice every time i watch it it, it's one of those ops where you feel bad if you skip it (laughs) yeah really and then there's only one show i'm watching this season that i don't i never skip the op that's windbreaker (laughs) oh windbreaker's op is pretty good though well dude that that op is so good oh my god (laughs) And then there's the ED. The ED, just like every other uh, Konosuba season, it's so fucking chill. I love listening to it. Japanese it, it, folk music. Oh my god! Is that what they're it's all based amazing. on? Yeah, I mean they, they all that they all have that like folk music sound aesthetic to it. It's just all mm. the lyrics are in Japanese. Now I believe this isn't done by Dean anymore, right? It, a no, studio it's done it by up. a brand new studio called Studio Drive. No. Yes. Okay. If I, remember I was right. gonna I was gonna mention that because so like, is the animation like a lot better because I <laughs> Dean's yes. animation was kind of hideous. <laughs> not gonna lie, it, I think it's it definitely looks better. really good. Yeah, I um, definitely think it looks a lot better. Okay. I wanted I wanted to bring that up a little bit because like yeah, you can shit on Studio Dean and of course JC Staff did the the movie right. Yes, I think yeah. Um, I I love the animation. I think it's great. Although, however, but here comes my hot take. I feel like don't don't you dare hit me. <laughs> um, I feel like part of the appeal of Konosuba's comedy is the janky animation, and I feel like a little bit of Actually, that is I lost agree. on the third season. There's certain parts here and there that I somewhat can agree with, but at the same time, when they need the janky funny animation, they put it in there and it looks amazing because of To be that. fair, they still have they still have the fucked up looking reaction faces, so that's funny. That that's what makes the comedy, in my opinion. But yeah, that's the one I, I hate to call it a crit I hate to call good animation the criticism. But <laughs> but I genuinely feel like part of Konosuba's appeal and especially the the jokes of how stupid these characters are comes from the janky animation they have sometimes. Well, just because something looks good and is animated well doesn't mean it's a good show. Like True. there's plenty of shows that I watch because there's like uh there's effective uses of stylized like art styles and stuff like that for sword art online (laughs) what sword art online it has good animation it's a shitty show oh yeah yeah. i thought you meant i was like stylized i'm like that's not stylized it's like generic anime what (laughs) no but that goes to your point that just because something has great animation doesn't mean that the story is good no no and just because it has great animation doesn't mean i'm gonna enjoy it either Hmm. like sure great animation and uh beautiful looking art attracts people like all things do mm-hmm. you know it's you know anime is such a visual medium <laughs> you, you can really just like see everything in anime but yeah i just i think that that complaint about like the animation for season three is, is a very valid point because it's to me like konosuba is never meant to be a serious story so it mm-hmm. being janky really sells that whole like this is not a serious fucking story guys like calm down yeah 
it's funny. It's not, but like, there's been actual cool and serious moments that happen here and there, which makes it really cool. Like, uh, in this season, there's the famous castle raid uh, that happens, and as an anime only, I fucking loved it. But when I went online just to talk about it with uh, other people, I heard it from like the light novel people. They're like, "Holy shit, they stiffed it so hard." I'm like, "Oh, okay." Like, I'm okay, like, wait, I still let me love stop it. you right there. You should never ever listen to someone. Who has read the source material's opinion on an anime? <laughs> oh, I don't care. Oh, I still love it. Really, yeah, John? Like... <laughs> really? Is that is that so, John? <laughs> because you can. It, it is so far and few. I can literally count on one hand the amount of animations that I would say met my expectation or exceeded my expectation of the light novel, like that I liked. Mm. Not not the trashy ones where I'm like, yep, that met my expectation of how trashy it was, but like the light novels I absolutely love and adore and their mm. anime counterparts. So that's that's yeah. what I mean. Because they're <laughs> again, I, I don't know I, I don't want to call out the entire like novel reading community um on this, but there's a lot of snobs uh in these type <laughs> of communities. They're they're very picky about like <laughs> I'm not that shut up <laughs> stop <laughs> I can nitpick things but I can still enjoy a show even if they don't meet my expectations because it's like I get the message you know mm -hmm. but there's also some who are just like it's like if it's not adapted frame by frame word by word it's a terrible adaptation <laughs> me with movies when it comes to books <laughs> yeah like how um like. You know, an example in Western media, I love the Lord of the Rings movies, you know, hmm. I hear the books are way better. And I, I remember uh, mm -hmm. his they son, are. Tolkien's son, hated the movies, Peter Jackson's mm -hmm. movies, right? Yeah. Um, was it Peter Jackson for the first trilogy? Yes. 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 It was for all of them, right? Well, it, all three of the movies, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he also no, did the Hobbit six. movies, too. He did the Hobbit movies. Yeah, he yeah. did the Hobbits. Okay. Those sucked, but, I mean, he did <laughs> yeah. them. I I don't blame that on him. I blame that on the Yeah, but like I remember um you know the interview with uh Tolkien's son being like, "Yeah, I hated the movies. They're tr they're trash. They're they're a stain on my father's legacy." And it's just like, yeah, cuz you grew up listening to it, you had this entire different vision, but I felt like Meanwhile, I liked the, the rest of us nerds <laughs> considered them the great some of the greatest <laughs> movies ever made. That I mean, I love the original trilogy. It's really good. Um so there's always going to be that disparity between like the source people and the non-source people, <laughs> which is why I'm like, you know, take people's opinions um, with a grain of salt because of that, because I, it just seems like people who read source material have a higher, not, not, is it a higher standard or are they just a lot more <clears throat> hyper picky about it? I, I don't know. I feel like they're more hyper picky than anything. I think it could not be a little bit of standard. both. Well, like, I like comparing source material to adaptation because, you know, as much as I would love to get a one-for-one -one adaptation of Overlord, I also like seeing um, creative what directing. They do different. Yeah. yeah, artistic differences. I like to see that because mm. it's like, how did how did they re-envision it? Like, and another uh, Western example is The Last of Us, the TV show. They did it completely mm. different from the video game, but I love the video game and I love the freaking TV so show. Like, they changed a bunch of things, but it worked really well. It told a very gripping story. Mm. So, that's why I'm like that. Like, just because it's not 100% like the source doesn't mean it's going to be bad. Because it's not, you know? I, I like, do with Chainsaw feel like Man, if, same thing. Yeah. Um, I do feel like there are... I don't want to call them exceptions, but instances where an adaptation into a different medium is helmed by the original creator. And I feel like those tend to do a, le a little bit better. Yeah. Cause I mean, obviously if it's the, uh, if the original creator is there, they have it, they know like, this is the feel they can tell you, this is the feeling that I was going for. Yeah. And you don't have to like, do it oh, exactly I how I did it in the book or, or the manga or whatever, but this is the, the idea, the feeling I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why, you know, I didn't hate the Bebop live action like everyone else. I'm like, it gave me the feel of Bebop. It wasn't nearly as good as actual Bebop until the ending with, like, Vicious. That was just complete doo-doo. I, I, I feel like the re <laughs> that's kind of the reason that the, the remake of Spice and Wolf is a little bit better than the original anime adaptation. Because in the remake, Asuna Hasakura, who is the original author of Spice and Wolf, is a producer on the show. 
Now, I don't know if in Japanese animation studios, producer credits can just be like just a producer credit. Like just because you are an executive producer on a production does not mean you actually like did anything for the show. It's just kind of a title card to be like, oh, we'll make you as True. a uh, put you as an executive producer. True. Just I don't like know if this credit. is. I- I, I haven't seen this like independently verified, so I don't know if this is true. I have heard that the producer credit for him is that he is giving script approval. Okay. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if that's one hundred percent true or not. It's just what I've heard. Right. But if okay. it is, that's pretty cool. Mm. But yeah, you know, um, I <laughs> I'll eventually get around to watching Konosuba season uh, two and three two, and the movie and the, movie. And the spinoff <laughs> eventually. <laughs> I don't know why I just I didn't start it, so then I I didn't want to go back to pick it up because I'm like, oh, I have so much I have to watch. Uh. I'm not exactly like starving for entertainment right now. Like I recently picked up um Sakamoto Days, uh, mm. because Natai posted about it, like, holy shit, it's getting an anime adaptation. Then I watched the trailer and I was like, this looks fucking hilarious. Let me go read this on Jump. So then I started reading that. So I'm like, I'm not. It's fucking know. hilarious. <laughs> it is. I love it. It's great. I, I can't I actually. I'm I'm hyped for the show now too. Because I'm like, oh man, this manga is pretty good. <laughs> I know. I know. None of us put this down, but I, I. Since this is very recent, I wanted to mention it just briefly. Have y'all been like thoroughly entertained by the Chainsaw Man manga community fucking falling <laughs> yeah. apart right now? <laughs> What do you mean falling apart? I love everything. Man. Bro, the Chainsaw Man manga is I'm hilarious. so fucked up. <laughs> dude. Dude. Oh, man. You know I mean, I every, every, no, great, no, no, no. every Alex, great work Alex, of Japanese Alex, no, 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 no. fiction has Alex, a Shinji Alex, moment. Listen, Alex. I didn't read the latest chapter, and then I saw you post that meme, and I was like, what happened in the latest chapter? So I went and read it, and I was like, now I see why he posted that. <laughs> Like, you bastard. Oh, I was about to remove it because I was like, is that a fucking spoiler I see? <laughs> no one else except manga readers who are, like, up to date on it would have been spoiled by that. So I was like, you know what? I'll forgive it for now because no one else. Even if, you don't. first of all, anime onlys wouldn't, wouldn't even know who the hell that is. So it's yeah. fine. Like, you wouldn't even know. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to remove it. I'm not going to say nothing about it. I mean, it's as just... anime only, I've seen so much art of her. I eventually figured out that she's a character that comes in later. Yeah, but you don't know who she is. No, no, no. Or, or you don't know what point she serves in the plot. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anyone knows what the point she serves in the plot is right now. And that is that is a fair point. I like, just Oh, my god, just over the last week or so watching the the Chainsaw Man manga community just fall apart. It's been so fucking hysterical to watch. See, I'm not part of any of those type of communities. Or like, or am I on Twitter? So I have no idea what people's reactions were. I've been enjoying the manga so far because I'm like, dude, yeah. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Like, what the hell is happening here? I just uh, every every great every great manga has to have its Shinji moment, and this is the Shinji moment. <laughs> and I'm I'm so glad it's here. I'm so glad it's here. It's crazy to me that people who have been reading the manga from the beginning are shocked by this happening, and it's like, dude, what? this has happened to him, like, five times, and you didn't bat an eye. All I'm saying is, like, <laughs> I keep... I'm not memeing when I uh, keep saying, like, this is peak manga. Like, I'm not it, it memeing. Is. That is... that I feel like this is peak manga because of, like, how nonsensical it all is, and it's like, that kind of fits to the theme of Chainsaw Man. It's not supposed to make sense, man. <laughs> Literally, the creator was just like, yeah, so I used to think about killing my classmates and stuff, so I made Chainsaw Man. Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> what did you guess, expect? <laughs> hey, I mean, I guess there's there. It's, it's a better way to get out your frustration than other ways you could have. Listen, like, when I heard, when I read that interview, I'm just like, okay, I kind of understand the mind of the creator now. I understand that this is supposed to be fucking just bad shit. You're not supposed to know what's going on. I'm here to enjoy the ride, man. I don't give a fuck about the destination. Absolutely. I'm 100% with you there. Um, Yeah, I just, I I really wanted to bring that up. I know none of us wrote it down, but it's just been so fun to watch. Oh, man. Let's see, what else do I got to talk about? Oh, I guess you can talk about mysterious disappearances. Um, hmm. So I remember I brought this up in the preview, mysterious disappearances. I was like, okay, I like I like mystery stuff. I like watching that. Um, I really like this show. I think it has a decent story. 
But I think that the etchy that they put inside of the show really detracts from it. Because what kind I feel of like etchy the is it? Uh it's not like overly etchy. Like it's not it's not as lewd as something like freaking Monogatari, for example. Like there's no two for mm-hmm. scenes or nothing like that. But uh the the main character main character girl is like she's got like giant freaking breasts. <laughs> like pfft, right? Okay. And it's just constantly just like the you got me. Uh, the other oh, yeah. character just always references her breasts and like, oh my god, she's got giant boobies. But it's like the the mystery element behind Mysterious Distant Princess is actually really cool because it's about um, I wouldn't call them Ayakashi. It's about like rumors, myths, and legends, and it's not just like Japanese ones. It's like things from around the world. Uh, these these mysteries happen around the main character and this other character who's like has to solve these mysteries for another mysterious reason it's like oh it's like are they part of this world are they not what what is the point it's like oh we don't know no one knows and that's what's fun about it because it's like oh man what is this what is happening here like what is this mystery element and it's like oh man who is this guy is he a ghost is he a person we don't know what are these powers that he has who are these people that he's meeting uh, and all the mysteries that I'm learning about, like the um, the combination of mysteries coming out of like China, uh, like the I think it was Malaysia or something was one of the ghosts too. Um, they're all really cool. Like I I didn't I don't I don't know I I like learning about cryptids and stuff uh, and mythos from other regions quite a lot. So maybe that's why I'm enjoying it quite a lot because it goes over a lot of that stuff. It's really cool, you know. So you're learning as you're <laughs> looking at big titties. <laughs> yes, there are big titties in it. Uh, I just feel like I know why they put this in here. Like sex sells. That's just, that's how it yeah. is. It, it, if it didn't have it, I know that the story could stand on its own, but it definitely wouldn't be nearly as popular as it is without all the, uh, boobies. Fair enough. I mean, let's be real. Some waifu bait always helps. Goes a long way. I mean, literally, there are some shows that are just literally all just waifu bait. So, yeah, um, I I don't know where the story is going. I but I am enjoying it. I don't. There's so much I want to talk about, but it's like it's all spoilers, and I don't want to talk about the spoil because it's it's the worst thing about talking about thriller mystery anime. I can't talk too much about it because then I would spoil shit, and I hate being spoiled for that type of stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, I I don't hate spoilers. Um when I get spoiled, but when it comes to mystery thriller, I do like to figure it out myself. So I would prefer not to be spoiled if I am given a choice. Hmm. Yeah, I get it. I mean, and I know there's some people that are like that too. Um, it is for, for stuff like this, the mystery, the thriller stuff, it's, it's super difficult to talk about this with people without spoiling it. Yeah. I just think that, um, the etchy itself is just like, like, it's not even like if the etchy was better, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's like if you're gonna put etchy in here just go balls to the wall bro like come on mm. just go full monogatari <laughs> yeah i'm serious like oh. fucking commit do it you pussy like brave absolutely brave <laughs> C- commit to fondling the little sister please <laughs> whoa i didn't say all of that we here at anime club after dark <laughs> look if mashal taught me anything it's better to be a siscon than a lollicon <laughs> anyway i'm gonna move on from that um go i'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk about another show that's problematic <laughs> nice oh hell yeah so tanari no yokai san um my neighbor is a yokai or whatever it is in english uh it seems like it's supposed to be a slow life cute anime and it is for the most part but it's got like a couple of dramatic moments like it's not really slice of life i'm not sure how to describe the anime like it has slice of life moments but it's basically about a world uh you're in japan but also yokai exists and they're kind of just part of normal life and that's just it uh the problematic thing that i have been noticing is that so there's like this one guy he's a tengu and he's like a thousand or something years old or whatever like hundreds of years old uh, one of the characters likes him, and she's like eleven or ten. Oh, and it's like likes at first, him in what way? You know what way? Oh, you know I what way? I wish you didn't say that. This way, so Alex, don't, 
Uh, at know. first, it's about a cat that dies, and then he becomes a uh, Nekomata. It's the cat with the two tails. Uh huh. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And it's voiced by, uh, I think it's Yuji Kaji. I think it's Yuji Kaji. I, I don't remember who it is. Word? Um, it is. So I'm just, it is Yuji Kaji. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's Yuji Kaji's voice. So I was like, okay, maybe his name is Buchio san. And it's like, I'm like, okay, maybe he's the main character. And it's like, nope, he's kind of not the main character. He's, But it's like, we start off following that guy and his journey as a yokai. So I thought maybe it might turn around him. And I thought that was interesting. He meets other yokai. He's trying to figure out like what he's supposed to do as a yokai. Because now it's like, well, I was just a house cat and I just wanted to be with my family. And now I'm a yokai. But I still want to love my family. And then he has to deal with like, since he's a yokai, he's going to live a long time. When his family passes, what's he going to do? Because, you know, he's now going to live forever. They're going to live for like the next 40, 50 years and then die. So it's like, oh, that's interesting, you know, perspective from a yokai's point of view. I'm like, that's actually really cool. And he meets different people and has different perspective. I'm like, that's actually all really cool and interesting and learning about different yokai and stuff that exists in the world and the spirit realm and all the gods and stuff like that's cool. Then it cuts to like the freaking Tengu guy and the 10 year old just like freaking Jiro, I love you. <laughs> but like not saying it because, you know, she's 10 and she, she can't say that out loud. But it's like everyone else realizes, like, Jiro, you need to respond to this girl's feelings. Like, it, it's her real feelings. And I'm just like, okay, that's a little problematic. Like, she's 10. But at the same time, it's like, well, this dude will literally live forever or for, like, thousands of years. What is 10 years old to, like, 30 years old? He can wait 20 years. It's Time is of no, like, time is not of the essence to this man. Time is, like, a drop in the, 20 years is a drop in the bucket for him, for, for her to become legal yeah right so i kind of wrote that off and i was like okay yeah maybe he'll accept her feelings they'll wait until she's of age or whatever you know what makes it more problematic he doesn't wait no (laughs) no what makes it more problematic is that this little girl her grandmother also loved jiro that's right literally they they made a huge thing about how jiro the guy that she likes the little girl likes also liked her grandma but they oh. never expressed their love for each other and i'm just like oh. you think this is a little problematic <laughs> like this oh. man has been around for hundreds of years he's fucking the whole family tree now <laughs> like what what is this <laughs> damn <laughs> this like... family tree's got like multiple forks in it in the same generation and i'm like i don't know how the end i don't know how the anatomy of that works i don't know if like there is i believe there's one couple there that's a yokai partner with a human and it's like they can i guess they can be partners i don't know how that's gonna work like you know biologically or anything like that they don't really go into that like not they don't go into it at all actually so i'm just like i'm just like i don't it it it, it sucks because it's like i like the show for like the buccio stuff and learning about the yokai Mm -hmm. but then they throw in this crap and i'm just like i don't give a fuck about this romance first of all (laughs) gross second of all Brother, ugh. Like, <laughs> brother, ugh. <laughs> Yo, I fucked your grandma, and I'm about to fuck you. Like, what the hell is going on here, brother? Like, damn. pop the brakes. <laughs> Just, damn. <laughs> so it's like, I gave it a pass at the beginning, but now I can't give it a pass no more. And I'm like, you know what? It's, it's a little much. <laughs> it's a little much. I don't, it, again, I told, like I said, the other stuff is great. The other, like, learning about the, the, the fox girl who taught Bucho how to transform and stuff and learning about how she ran away from her family because her family was, like, uh, suffocating her with the, all the, like, this and that. And, like, it's, so it's good. It's got good moments. Ah, it sucks. It's just ruined by bullshit. By this fucking love story subplot that I do not give two fucks about. Like, that's why include it at all? Like, that's not because interesting. What you're talking about, about how, like, seeing the world's perspective through the yokai who live for hundreds and hundreds of years, that actually sounds interesting. Yes! It, it does, but then actually, to shoehorn though. in this, like, romance, this multi-generational romance with the same family, it's like, eh, why? Yeah, it's it's weird, bro. I don't know. It's like, you know what it reminds me of? It remind well, not exactly, but... Have you ever seen Bicentennial Man? No. no. How Robin Williams' character in that, like, f- falls in love with the daughter of the girl who he used to, like, be a servant for, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, it's that. It's like, you saw this person when they were a kid, and now you're like, why? 
Yeah, I I mean, I, I understand it's a complicated issue of, like, growing up with people and this and that, and this is, like, it's a different perspective. Like I said, if you live for basically forever, what is 50 years to you? It's nothing. True. So it's not really that much of a problem. They, but I just can't get over the fact the... that it was, like, why did they have to shoehorn the grandma thing, bro? Like, what the fuck? They bring this Why? up in the. Uh, it's a family the... tradition. Oh <laughs> yeah, they don't even fuck the Tengu. They bring they bring something similar to this up in the video game Mass Effect with the Asari who live like a thousand years, and they talk about like hooking up with humans. It's like yeah, when you hook up with humans, you just gotta you know, uh, you gotta take it for like a hundred years, and then they're dead. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Anyway, that's all I had to say about uh, that show. Okay, oh, Alex. I, I, no, I've I blow, I've completely blown my load on things I wanted okay. to talk about. So it's all you two from here on out. And... Okay then. Um, I'll talk about. <clears throat> Please talk about High Q. Yeah, because I want. I have a question. Okay, go mm. ahead. Is it actually called Battle at the Garbage Dump? Yes, it's literally. We've been through this. We went through this like a uh, a little while ago. It One is bro, I can't titles. Called Battle at the garbage dump. Why is it called Battle at the Garbage Dump? Do they fight in a junkyard? <laughs> no, the <laughs> mascots for the teams are uh one is a crow, the other is a cat, and it's crows and cats at a gar uh, garbage dump just fighting each other. And it's got to be a Japanese. This reference is so Japanese and foreign to me, bro. Like. It's weird. I, you know, I, Wakari Masen, bro. Like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Haikyuu Battle at the Garbage Dump Part 1. Um, Is this a movie? Fun movie. Huh? It's a movie. Okay. Yes. yes. I was yeah, like, I, I, I didn't see any, an, like, announcements for, um, because I think Haikyuu's on Crunchyroll, right? It is on Crunchyroll. Yeah, yeah I haven't yeah. seen anything, like, promotion or anything for it. That's why I was like, Oh I, my I god, if it was a season, they would have been hyping it the fuck up. I don't know. They oh. kind of put all their money on uh, Kaiju number Kaiju eight. Kaiju number eight. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah, is great yeah. though. Cause I like Kaiju number eight. So whatever. <laughs> but no, um, battle at the garbage dump in, in theaters. It was fantastic. A uh, lot of people showed up in the theaters to watch it. So I was really happy to see that. Um, got to talk to a bunch of fellow fans. Um, fun movie. Very exciting. A lot of hype. Um, really fucking cool. I thought it was uh, the final part. I thought it was just going to be the movie and then that's it. No, uh, surprised me with, yeah, no, there's uh, we're finishing out this overall tournament we're in. There's going to be part two. I'm like, okay, cool. I am very hyped for this. I do so, not give two fucks about Haikyuu. <laughs> no, it, it's on, for on a us scale, Tumblr fangirls. On a, on a scale of, of one to Richard Simmons, how gay is this movie? Okay, actually, is Richard that is a shame. Are, is, really, I really Wait, <laughs> who is Richard Simmons, the exercise dude? Oh, the one in spandex 70s, yes, with all the um, I might be thinking of someone else then. <laughs> might be thinking of uh, okay, I, I was thinking of a singer, no. That's I don't Gene know who Simmons? Gene Simmons, yes, is a singer. <laughs> Wait, who's Musician. Gene Simmons? From oh. oh, from Kiss. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, the secretary is telling me, like, I, I listen, I don't know. I don't know none of this, man. I, anyway. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on. IQ um, fun. Yeah, IQ fun. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Not for you, uh, bro. Speaking of another show that's kind of fucking gay um <laughs> the many like, sides of voice gay. actor radio um i i went into this thinking this looks like yuri bait and it's kind of yuri bait um kind of i don't i don't know because it's like to me watching it's about uh these girls who go to the same high school who are uh voice actors who want to become like idols or like professional voice i don't know what the hell they, they were idols and they want to be voice actors or some shit i don't fucking remember the premise but there are two girls and they have like different personalities one's like one's calm and cool and the other one's like a gyaru but then their mm. personalities when they're voice acting 
and slash idols are like, you know, typical idols, like they're say so. Hmm. And they have like conflict and this and that. Uh, I really like the show. <laughs> uh, I don't, I thought it was going to be Yuri bait. It's because it, it, you know, like you look at the two girls, they're holding hands. Like, is this Yuri bait? It's like, nope, it's not Yuri bait. Um, they're just really good friends, right? They were roommates. <laughs> the cousins. They were cousins. Oh, they were cousins. <laughs> they oh, were yeah, cousins. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sailor Moon. Cousins. Well, it's like, uh, <clears throat> so these two girls, they compete with each other for, like, roles and stuff. And it actually um, it delves a lot into voice acting, which I think is really interesting, you know, in the Japanese mm-hmm. world. And about the professionalism and stuff like that. And I just think it's a really good show overall to just show like the emotions of people going through trying to go like trying to make their dreams come true of becoming a voice actor slash idol i'm just like i like that it's a lot more realistic too like they don't the the main character girls don't always face success and how they have to deal with failures and feelings of inadequacy against their peers and stuff like that i'm like this is interesting this is very human i like these human emotions this actually sounds really good yeah um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a very riveting or gripping story, but I, I just, I just like the story because it is human. <laughs> these <laughs> girls have, um, fallacies, you know, these, these girls have issues that they have to work through, which is a good thing. You know, that's one thing that, uh, I don't think a lot of anime focus on like the, the problems with their characters and how they get past these trials and tribulations. Cause you know, a lot of anime, the main character is always just like, some perfect being that can just like do everything possible, like no effort, you know. Which I, is another I will reason say, why like, well, I like Mashoko Tensei. Yes, I will say that's a that's a common failing. I would say of a lot of modern uh, isekai and just straight up fantasy stuff in anime is this propensity to make the main character either a Mary Sue or a Gary Stu. It's like, yeah, okay, these infallible I get, heroes. I get I get that the the whole like OP main character thing is just a, you know a power fantasy and I get that and it has its place in fiction, but man, there's something like overdoing it and y'all are overdoing it. Yeah, this is why I'm really enjoying the Dune movies. I just watched Dune too, and I was yeah. just like, oh my god, I love Dune so much. It's so good, bro. Because of that. <laughs> oh, you started reading, right? No, I still you haven't read, read the books. You should uh, read the you novels. Do. They're uh, so good. I so I wanted to say something about that really quickly. Uh, David Lynch, who made the first Dune uh, film adaptation back in the eighties. Oh, the one that has not, um, not it's, great. It's Sting. Is Sting in it? Yes, yeah, Sting is in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and he teased that he was making a big announcement recently, and everyone's like, "Dune two, Dune two." <laughs> I was uh, like, "Oh my god! If 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 he does a a sequel to his Dune, I'm so here for it. <laughs> Bring back Sting. <laughs> yes, I, I think every one of the main characters that he had is still alive and is still acting. <laughs> oh my god! Holy shit! That would actually be amazing. Hell, the dude that plays um uh fuck, what's the main character's name? Um, Paul in Dune. Paul, thank you. The dude that plays Paul in the uh, David Lynch Dune plays Lucy's dad in Fallout. <laughs> oh shit! Oh, Are you serious? Man. Yeah, it's Kyle McLachlan. <laughs> oh fuck! That's actually cool. Oh my god! Side tangent. Okay. I really like the Fallout TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Have we not talked tangent. about that yet? It's a I great know. show. I think someone talked about it. Uh, I think it was it was you, Alex. You talked about it on a WTF, right? I, I might have. I might have. Yeah, on yeah. a WTF. I remember it was like we talked two months about it ago, I think, or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I finally watched that too. I also watched like Jack Reacher first season. I've been watching a bunch of like Western properties. Did you take my advice? Did you not watch season two? I didn't start watching season two. Yeah. Good man. I mean, I've heard I'll, so many I'll mixed watch things about Jack Reacher season two. I'll, I'll watch good. season two eventually, but I'm just like, look, I liked season one. I binged it in one single night because I had nothing to do at work. <laughs> so I, I had like four, I had like six hours to kill. And I was like, all right, I'll just watch. I'll watch Jack Reacher because I, I have Amazon Prime Video. So whatever. I, um, 
it's funny to me. I haven't seen the new Jack Reacher TV series, but to me, the only person I know is Jack Reacher is Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, Because he was yeah. in, like, three movies <laughs> that, yeah. where he played Jack Reacher. I've never Jack seen uh, the Tom Cruise movies for that. They're pretty good. I just remember watching – it was, like, on YouTube short or something, like, of the first episode of Jack Reacher season one, like, clips mm-hmm. from it. And I was like – Okay, I'm going to watch this fucking show. <laughs> Speaking of Tom Cruise, uh, recently he posted something like on Twitter, I think it was, about the anniversary of um, All You Need Is... Or not, uh, uh, Edge of Tomorrow, mm-hmm. uh, which is an is adaptation kill, yeah. of All You Need Is Kill. Right. And uh, he actually credits that movie with revitalizing his career. Really? Oh, shit. It's just really? crazy. To, like, he genuinely loves that movie, and he loved being in it. Really? Not not like Mission Impossible, the tenth fucking movie. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I think I think it's because at the time that movie came out and he was acting in it, he was genuinely considering retiring. Oh, oh, I and, see. He revitalized his love for. Okay, I, I yeah, it revitalized yeah, yeah, yeah. his love for being in movies. Okay, I thought you meant like his career. I'm like, he was doing pretty well as freaking Mission Impossible. Tom Cruise, like, yeah, he's talked about like before. He was talking about like before that movie came out. He was like seriously considering just stepping away, maybe doing stuff behind the scenes. I mean, and not being like an actor anymore. But now he's like, that was the movie he said was like, no, this is what I love. I would say that it is about time a lot of the old card retires and makes their way to new (sighs) actors. I mean, there's been a lot of new people that have been coming in recently, and I think that a lot of them have been doing a good job. Like, Timothy Chalamet, I mean, come on, he's in everything. But I feel like they're just starting out. I'm like, we need more big names. Anyway, this is an anime podcast. (laughs) Oh, right, right. right. Yeah, let's actually go back to talking. What were we talking about before? Um, uh, many sides voice, actor, of voice radio. actor radio. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's all I had to say about it. Like I thought it was Yuri Bait. Uh, I got debated. It wasn't Yuri Bait, but it's actually kind of decent because you know it's very human, very human experience. Okay. Um, other than that, I mean, <laughs> I can just list off the last two of mine real fast. I don't have too yeah. much to say about them. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. Sure. Uh, banished from the Heroes Party, Slow Life. I oh I binge watched God. season one and two. That's from, like, so season two aired last season, I believe. And season one was, like, two years prior to that. So I read this manga originally, and I was like, yeah, this kind of sucks. Uh, so I, I wasn't interested in watching the anime. Mm. And then I I don't remember, I think it was you, Chinoda. You posted that, like, you know, I would like to be my brother's mistress or whatever when she's in the uh, bathroom with Lit. And I'm just like, hey, yo, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Hey, yo, what, what kind of sweet home Alabama shit is this? So I only read the manga up to the first season. Like I got to the end of the manga uh, and I dropped it after getting to the end of the first season, basically. And I was like, it's not interesting enough for me to continue um, watching this or reading this. Hmm. But after you posted that, Chidot, I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll put it up. This is my new background show while I do other shit. <laughs> Where I don't have to focus too much. And I was right. The anime sucks. <laughs> like, Listen, I, I like the characters of Red and Lit. Um, I, I really love Lit. I love her as a character. Everything else about the show fucking sucks, though. Like, I don't care about the... this. First of all, it's half-assed with its... It's not even full slow life, right? Like, there's slow life shows where it's like, this is all slow life shit, right? And I love that type of stuff. Uh, slow life farming, Isekai slow life farming, hilarious show, love it. Uh, banished from the hero's party, slow life, terrible, because it's like, yeah, sure, he's banished to the to the freaking countryside, but he's like, oh, I'm gonna live a slow life here. But also, like, the main drama comes to him anyway in season one and two. Like, it does, he's still part of the main fucking story, and I'm like, this is dumb. I thought, like, what kind of slow life anime is like? I thought I was out, but they keep pulling me back in. <laughs> me back in. Like, like so dumb, bro. I was like, oh, this is fucking garbage. Like, ugh. That's and all. You that's... watched two full seasons of this that's... shit. Well, because Fair I had criticism. Yeah. I had nothing else to watch. Um, that I had nothing else to watch that I could put on in the background. Because again, I for whatever reason I'm I got to have something on while I'm doing other things like eating or like working on stuff. I just have to. I don't know why. I just do. And if it's as long as it's a show where I, you know, listening to a show and just practicing my conversational Japanese by listening to it and just like I, I can understand, I, I'm becoming Nihongo Jozu by listening to what they're saying. I don't have to read it, so I can kind of understand what's going on, you know. 
It's like, get my reps in. <laughs> it's like going to the gym. It's going to the gym for your brain. Yeah. So, um, John, I'm going to say I'll agree with you on some points, but overall, I still like it. I think what you're searching for necessarily isn't what the show offers. Yeah, no, definitely, 100%. I, my complaints about the show are just like, it's the show's direction is not the type of direction I would like in either a banished from the heroes party um, trope or a slow life trope. That's yeah. what it is. It's a I, very I did weird not mix like, of both. Yeah. yeah, it's a very weird mix of both because I, I read a lot of like other banished from the heroes party uh, type of manga and novels and slow life manga and novels. This is a weird mix of the two, and I don't like the mix. You know, it took the two worst parts of both of these type of tropes and smashed them together in a show. So that's my problem. It's a personal complaint. Like the show itself is fine, the animation's fine. It doesn't drop in quality and stuff like that. Uh, not compared to if like anything. Uh, it actually improves in quality from season one to season two, which I found yeah. surprising, but I'm very happy about. Yeah, the, like there's fight scenes and stuff. Um, and like I said, I I really do like the character of Lit. I like her like. Just the her design and her personality and stuff. I'm like, she's a cool girl. I like her. I want more of her. And also, yeah. um, Rei Kugumiya is in it, and she voices the assassin girl. So I'm like, I don't mind listening to Rei Kugumiya speak. <laughs> I will say though, uh, they definitely didn't adapt Tise very well, the assassin girl, uh, in the anime compared to the uh, manga. Really? So What's in the, the, the manga, there's a lot more internal dialogue with Tise. Oh. Like, I she's feel like there's a fair bit of internal dialogue in the anime itself. Yeah, but she's not really portrayed as like so when she's um like when she first meets uh the hero Rudy, she's there to keep an eye on Rudy and also to assassinate her if she has to. Because the assassin goes like, Hey, she's kinda powerful. Too powerful. Keep an eye on her. But then like uh Tise is like fucking scared shitless <laughs> of Rudy. So she's like when she's piloting the stuff, she's doing it because she doesn't want to get fucking killed. But they don't really portray that. So I was just like, yeah, it's kind of there's a difference between the the manga. I know it's based on the light novel, so I I, you know, I don't know how it is portrayed, but that's the difference to me from the manga to the anime. Okay. And uh, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, TNG, but not the good one. Damn, I, you got me so excited. It's like he's finally seen the light. <laughs> <laughs> I will never be a Trekkie. I have I'm not even a freaking Star Wars fan. Like, come on, live long and Turn prosper. Yes. <laughs> Um, the new gate. I I read this manga. I have not read the novel. No, I have read the novel, a little bit of the novel, but then the novel wasn't translated as much as the um the manga was. I believe the the translation for the novel was like stopped or something. They stopped yeah. it basically where the anime is right now. So I only the only information I have about the new gate is where they are right now. In fact, I believe that I was I stopped reading the novel exactly where the anime is right now. But I still I kept reading the manga, which was further than where the anime is now. Wait, what? Because <laughs> the uh, the novel wasn't translated um, uh, in English like okay. further when I was reading it back then, and I just was like, yeah, it's not good enough for me to continue reading the novel. I'll I'll just go read the manga. People Cause, translate because that's like, kind of how my shit. my scale is. Like, if it's really good, I'll go read the novel. If the novel is not that great, but I still think it's an okay story, I'll read the manga. And maybe watch the anime. <laughs> so that's kind of like my scale. Like novel is top tier. Manga is like it's not it's not a top tier thing. Don't really care about it. Uh, but I, I still don't mind consuming the media. So I'll read it and watch it. And then then anime is like bottom tier of like, yeah, if I got time, I'll watch it. <laughs> I don't know. That's my weird ranking system of how I, I do stuff. But um, yeah, the uh, the new gate is it started off pretty strong. Uh, animation wise and story wise and just lately the animation in it has just been garbage absolutely it's hot jank as fuck yeah it's f absolute fucking dog water like i i was hyped for one of the scenes like the fighting scene where him and um where he has to fight the the king skulljack whatever and he meets up with Shinya yeah. for the first time like that scene in the manga was amazing and in the novel i love that scene it's really cool it's a really because i like the new gate because it's like Okay, it's 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 isekai. It's um, op it hits all MC. The right yeah. yeah, it's like it's supposed to be like my isekai trash. So I'm like, as long as the fight scenes are cool, I'll I'll enjoy it. You know, if I, if the story is not good, as long as the fight scenes are good, I'll I'll be satisfied. I'll be satiated. But 
the anime is just like it just let me fucking down bro and then even and then continuing on it just gets worse and worse and i'm like what what is happening here did your budget just dry up like what the fuck it starts off really well and then it just kind of just tapers off it's really so they blew know. their budget on the first few episodes i think so i it think they ran out like of animation it. i have no idea it's a shame when that happens and it's just like i just you know if you're not going to adapt the it's not like the story was amazing anyway so it's not like they had much to adapt from that but <laughs> at least make the fight scenes cool dude like you've got to have yeah. a caveat somewhere if you know you're going to adapt something that's a mediocre story but it has like action sequences in it at least make those action sequences fun to watch yeah like give me something <laughs> yeah unfortunately disappointed yeah. yeah i mean i'm again i do like the manga i like the fights I like looking at Schnee, so I'll keep watching it. <laughs> It'll probably get a second season. Hopefully. Hopefully it gets better. <laughs> Hopefully, odd. well, sometimes when things get second seasons, they inject more money into it. So I'm uh, here's here's the hoping, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, according to you guys, Mashal's that way. Oh, yeah. They, yeah they freaking, same yeah. thing for like Kaguya. Kaguya season yeah. two and three, way better budget. Way more animation. <laughs> so who knows? All right. right, Shinoda, finish us off. Yes, sir. Uh, Demon Slayer Hashira training arc. It's literally it? a training arc. It's literally a training yeah. arc. Bro. That's it. The, That's yeah. it. Training arc. Yeah, it's a Hashira oh training arc. God. Like, <laughs> there it's literally doing what it says it. on the tin, not in my anime. It's it's okay. It's like you see all the people training. Um, there's like I little think bits that... of story here and there, but unfortunately. I feel like Demon Slayer after Mugen Train is just a disappointment. Yeah, kind of a disappointment. Like it just feels like that to me. Like you had it feels freaking... like it peaked way too early in the story. A little bit, right? Like it doesn't have the same intensity as uh the first season like with like Mugen the fire Train breathing feels... techniques and stuff like that. And then Mugen Train, right? Like Mugen you can't Train feels like a climax. Well, you can't have season one and then go to Mugen Train and be like, yo, and then you have the, now you have the freaking blacksmith arc and now you have the Hashira training arc. And it's like, oh, well, these are not nearly as good. <laughs> and I'm, I can I'm tell hoping... you, I can tell you, unfortunately, the manga follows that same pattern. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah these are it's... these are the boring chapters. It, it's crazy I mean... that, that with the hype this thing had, how much like I feel like if if everything after Mugen Train had as much hype as that had, we'd still be talking about Demon Slayer every week. Yeah, but we're not. Honestly, I'll be honest. It does feel like a natural downloads. I, I feel like so long as the um, building blocks. That's what they're setting up. They're setting up some building blocks. So long as they set it up properly, right? And the yeah, hype rises and, and back I feel like up, I'll be fine. So every... long as the payout matters every shonen goes through this cycle right where it's like yeah. here's the first climax of the first like true arc right the first mm -hmm. three volumes or whatever of the novels or tonkoban whatever like this is where the first big thing happens and it's like here's my big hook for making sure people come back naruto then... does that with the tuning exam arc exactly yeah it, it, it's kind of it's a tried and true like thing and demon slayer goes through that and it's kind of just a typical shonen um pathing that they go through where like yeah. for example uh bleach you know like the soul society arc that was yeah. freaking up there bro i love the soul society arc like it's up there and then yeah. right you know what do we do after soul society was it the bounto the boring part i believe that was that came right after it. yeah yeah, yeah like i don't no one gave a shit about the i, I don't give a fuck about the bounto <laughs> like this sucks go back to soul society every <laughs> <laughs> Every every shonen has their highs and lows, and it's just it's a tragic thing. But it's kind of what happens, you know. They'll they either you know the story becomes complacent, but it's all building stuff, and it's but it's always about how do they fold this back into it. Like I, I think that like with Bleach, like sure it should have ended with Aizen. It should not have made more of that. But Thousand Year Blood War is amazing. So as long as it folds back it comes back and it folds back together it's and it's fine i haven't read i haven't read demon slayer so maybe it does do that i don't know i'm I, hoping it does no spoilers <laughs> yeah, no, spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers i hope it does, i feel like right? i feel like if it did do that i would have been spoiled for it by now <laughs> <laughs> who knows 
Who knows? Who knows? Um, At least the animation is still great. Yeah, yeah, no, that is even for the training art, it looks fucking amazing. I'm just like, yo, y'all didn't have you could have saved your budget for this uh arc. But like no, no they, Fotables, it still looks Fotables good. got money they gotta not spend on taxes, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> didn't they get in trouble for not paying their yeah, taxes they again? <laughs> yes. <laughs> for new Fotable. There's a there was a, a manga that also got popped for tax evasion recently. It's, it's like Jesus Christ, this is like the number one crime in Japan, not paying your taxes. <laughs> I feel like it's the number one crime in like all of the developed worlds, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Why in the world did you kill President Kimball? He tried to make you pay taxes. Understandable. <laughs> Seriously, dude. <laughs> Isn't that why the U.S. was founded? Because they're like, hey, pay taxes. They're like, fuck you. (laughs) Fuck this tea tax. (laughs) Fuck your tea. Oh, God. Um, Now, for my last show, and arguably one of the best, if not the best on this whole list, fucking Dungeon Meshi. Bro, I I have not watched the anime past, like, episode two or three y'all really? are missing out so am i missing bad. out i read the source i read i finished the novel bro oh, oh, or oh, the manga can bro I, am i missing I out say, you're so missing out because the anime is fucking amazing can bro. i just say this is the most simultaneously this is the most trigger and untrigger anime i've ever seen trigger <laughs> it is so untrigger it's unfathomable i i like every time i'm like is this really triggered that made this because this is like it has it, no it, it has, DNA, but... It has its moments. It has its moments where the trigger DNA shows up, but they're few and far between. Now, is Dungeon Meshi done airing? No. No, it's a. Uh, like it's going to be It's gonna be left? finished at the end of this season. Oh, okay. All right. I think um, it has one more episode Give me left, a maybe? rundown of where the anime is right now. So I, can, I know where you're at. Mm. Oh, let's see, let's see. The kitty joined. The kitty has joined the party. <laughs> oh, okay. You're not even nearly at the hype part. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> well, like, I, I so definitely cool. think... It started off as uh, just a ha-ha funny cooking in a dungeon anime. Yes, that's exactly like, what I was talking about. There like, is so much in the background. I know. I know. Up. I told you guys this. I told you when I picked up Dungeon Meshi, I was like, ha-ha funny cooking manga. And then, like, 100 chapters in, or no, like... 90 chapters in, you're like, hey, yo, what the fuck? There's actual story here? Like, with the shit that's going on in the background? You're like, yo, what the fuck? It's like finding out about the Golden Castle, the ancient uh, people, just the curse. Oh, my yes. God. The dungeon, cle- the dungeon cleaners are so fucking cool. It's such a little thing, but I'm like, yo, the lore behind them is really fucking cool. I don't oh remember which mangaka that was like, yo, my favorite manga right now is Dungeon Meshi. It's like a famous one. I don't remember if it was Oda Sensei or not. It was a very famous mangaka that said, like, Dungeon Meshi is their favorite manga right now. And I was I like, hey, was yo. Oda. I, I do not remember. Uh, I, I know anyone... what you're talking about. I just can't remember exactly who it was, but I want to say it was Oda. Well, a, a famous um, <laughs> person in the anime industry was like, hey, yo, Dungeon Meshi is my favorite manga right now. And I was like, hey, yo, if they think it's good, like, <laughs> damn, it must be good. But I already knew it was good because I was already reading it. So, yeah, but I'm yeah, enjoying it. Animation, amazing. Music, fucking excellent. Like, yeah, I, I expect I no to... less from Trigger. I, I, really? But still, the fact that they really are. And all, the... <laughs> I mean, so since trigger wasn't writing it i was like there's no way they can fuck it up because the source material is great <laughs> so trigger only has to do what trigger does best the animation the art and the music <laughs> that's and all that's all they had to do off. they're pulling it off hard and i love it yeah they they 100 are like i give trigger a lot of credit there it I know it was really hard for you not to go into like crazy shit trigger. And I'm, I'm very proud of you. Well, that, for that. That's, here's the fun thing. It goes to crazy shit on its own. So trigger just has to follow the path. Oh, they don't even all, have all to I do can it. say, all I'm going to leave you guys with about what's going to happen towards the end of dungeon meshi is trigger is going to get to cook. All right. Oh. Trigger is going to get to cook. 
Look, all, all I'm looking forward to now is Trigger to find some convoluted way, even if it doesn't happen in space. the source material, <laughs> to take the story to fucking space. And if it doesn't end that way, fuck you. Arguably, they somewhat did, because uh, one of the uh, suits, uh, Marce uh, Marcel? Uh, Marcel, yeah. Marcel. Marcel, uh, is like a full-on like galaxy suit. It's a very weird outfit that she wore in one of the, uh, in a village and it was just like okay they, they did the space thing <laughs> i'll count it trigger trigger not go to space challenge impossible <laughs> no it's really cool though it, it is amazing i look forward to it every single week i'm sad the season's almost over because i'm like i need more like i'm really thinking about picking up the manga after this kind of oh, good it's pretty and, good and it's really it's fucking pretty good, good. <laughs> and, and Shinoda, you are right. The final episode comes out next week, um, I June know. 13th. It's going to bum me out so much, but I'm like, season two, baby. <laughs> Just give it to so me. So I guess they're going to finish it in uh, two seasons then, if they do 20-something episodes for both. Yeah, 24 episodes this season, and they do another 24-episode season. That should be the whole thing, right? Yeah. Oh, really? Is it uh, not too much uh, story? Enough for two seasons? Well, you can condense a lot of it. Okay. Um, the manga is say... finished, and it only has 102 chapters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, they could do that then. Yeah, mm -hmm. John, I will say, even for you, someone who's already read it and finished it, it's worth watching. It's oh, I want to so watch it. It's just, like, an annoying way to go watch it is, like, what's it streaming on? Um, Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. That's the... <laughs> you know, it's the one thing I don't have? Netflix. <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. I literally it feels like Trigger, have like all their stuff all... is on Netflix now. Yeah, maybe they signed an exclusive deal with uh, uh They Netflix. must have. Mm. They must have. Or either that or Netflix keeps giving them amazing deals. Either way, it gives mm. us pretty damn good anime, so, you know, sure, why not? I mean, Hiroyuki Imaishi gonna Hiroyuki Imaishi, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and that's Although I don't think me. he's the director of Dungeon Meshi. <laughs> I'm honestly not sure. I haven't even looked. Um, no, I think it's um, uh, yeah, Masahiko Atsu Atsuka is the uh, I think is the director of um, a Dungeon Meshi. But anyway, yeah, uh, I I thoroughly recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it yet. But uh, that's it. That's everything. We actually got to everything on our list this time. Thank Holy God. Shit. It's been months <laughs> since that's happened. Months. Yeah, so <laughs> we've had we've been like pushing stuff back a month like for the last three months <laughs> don't let them know about the production delays <laughs> yes uh but yeah that's it for um this month's uh monthly dump thank you everyone for dropping in to watch us talk about the things we've been watching don't forget to like comment subscribe down below if you like what you saw and want to see more it really really does help us out you can also check down below uh where you can find links to all the stuff anime club after dark does you can join our discord server down there too as long as you're 18 plus um we have a merch store linked down below where you can help us out that way if you want get some nice anime club after dark merchandise but with that i have been your host alex and we will see you next time say goodbye guys bye bye back to final shape for me oh my god i want to play destiny 2 so bad <laughs> <laughs>